<clears throat> Everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm doing a video. I haven't. I know I haven't done one in a while. I'm not going to be doing uh, as many the next several weeks or months, but I'm going to try to uh, get to going doing uh, lawn form and uh, lawn uh, in making videos. Um, just feel like uh, I sputtered all over the place with my. <laughs> in the last, you know, the last year or so with a bunch of videos, and I just want to do more stuff that's a little more involved. Of course, this is not um, this one. And also, I have a lot of projects that I'm doing right now, including a uh, website that I'm working on. Almost have possible programmers. I may or may not announce it on this channel. I don't know. Um, probably will, because I you know, figured it's probably a good idea to publicize this. But, um, also just working on many different things right now. So decided I'm not going to do as many videos on here, but I'm going to probably do, uh, some really, I might be doing some more like, uh, really long videos and that are more, uh, work intensive if I can. My computer, my, I don't know, hard drive, but it's sputtering a little bit too much, um, or I don't know if it's the RAM or what, but it's kind of acting a little weird. The hard drive, according to all the uh, testing software, is fine. But I'll be figuring that out soon as well, because that's what I'm recording the new album on. So, but this video is not about any of that stuff. Um, this is about Ricky Rackman. So today was the announcement that Ricky Rackman is doing a new Headbanger's Ball style thing called The Ball. I guess it's on... Uh, some kind of knot fest, which is uh, related to Slipknot, which um, some channel that is associated with them. Um, not a big fan of Slipknot, honestly. Sorry, but uh, knot fest has some cool stuff. Actually, you know when they have the uh, the tours and stuff. So the guys in the band themselves are fans of good stuff that I do like, but. Um, that's not what Ricky Rackman is uh, talking about, of course. Um, he's talking about uh, doing this new show. And I do did, did do a uh, video over a year ago called uh, In Defense of Ricky, Ricky Rackman. It was about last year around this time when I saw that he was uh, expressing interest in doing that, doing another Headbanger's Ball. And I know he's had a lot of critics, but... Um, if you watch the interview with him uh, talking about this, he's also always been kind of self-deprecating and d definitely more of a guy that can take not doesn't take himself too seriously, which is really cool. I thought growing up watching him, and another thing I like about him, and I don't know if you're going to bring this back, but um, if he didn't really like a band, he'd be all passive aggressive about it and be like, "Yeah, so how's the new album?" Uh, trickster or uh you know uh uh glam puppies from pinkville or whatever you know some fucking pretty boy floyd i don't know i don't know if he hated all those bands but a lot of second like the third generation glam metal bands he really kind of he was like yeah i'm gonna play this new song it's from their new album <laughs> you could just tell he was like making fun of this shit i was laughing my ass off when i was a kid but now Watching that shit is just even better. So, yeah, I don't know if he's going to do that. It'll probably be interesting to see what his approach and his style is. Because other than his YouTube channel and his Twitter, I haven't really followed him, his career after the Headbanger's Ball that much. Like, with NASCAR. And I did listen, no, I did listen to his podcast. but Which is really interesting and entertaining, actually. I would highly recommend that. Um Especially the one about the Cat House, which was a club he co-owned with uh, Ty Timey, I think Jane Tammy, Tammy Down from uh, Faster Pussycat, which was a second generation glam band in L.A. But nevertheless, you know, actually, I have always called Faster Pussycat part of like the the sleaze metal, like Junkyard, Guns N' Roses. I always called that sleaze metal. I called hair metal like Winger and all that shit, but I don't know. It's all, you know, it's all just 80s hard rock metal, whatever, you know, I always tried to like, no, they're better because it's sleaze metal, you know, but um, I was listening to Steelheart the other day, so I mean, I can't really talk anymore. It was like the ultimate low in 
back when I was a kid, it was like, oh, Steelheart, you know, the worst shit ever, you know, but there's a song that I like by them, this ballad, it's really depressing, it was pretty, really good. <laughs> Guy's voice is a little weird at times, though, for me. I was listening to Valentine, which is like this AOR hair metal band, so it's like, when I got older, instead of getting into Phil Collins, or, uh, adult contemporary, or I got into glam metal. <laughs> as, as a kid, it was rebelli you know, rebellious against it. You know, you were rebellious. You were those posers or even worse uh, epithets, which I won't use on YouTube. But um, you can imagine what people said back then, especially my brother, even though he liked a lot of the bands too. But um, yeah, so uh, Ricky Rackman doing a new Headbanger's Ball kind of thing. Um, I think it's awesome because I always liked him. And I think that kind of represents like a a good point in our history of metal. Cause like, I don't know, it's just cool to have them return. It's like every Saturday night you would, uh, sometimes you'd have friends over at your father's house and you'd eat tombstone pizza and drink Pepsi and stay up all night watching Headbanger's Ball. And then you would discover your your uh, brother's roach clip thing and smell it and say, well, what is this when you're 10 or 11 years old or whatever? <laughs> and, like, and in his tape, in his tape case with all his tapes. So it's cool. It's cool having returned. He looks like he's not five years older than he was when he quit the ball or he got kicked off or whatever. It's pretty cool. I think it's cool. Um, he knows a lot about certain types of new bands. Um, not really my thing, more like kind of newer thrash kind of Lamb of God kind of bands, you know, not exactly my thing, but better than, you know, he was talking about like, we're not going to have the shine downs of the world on this show. I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I was pretty happy here in that. And he wasn't dissing to shine down, but he was just, uh, you know, he was saying he doesn't want to have radio rock on there. And I was pretty fucking proud of him saying that. That was pretty cool. Um, of course they might have a couple of things like that. I wouldn't be surprised. It's some company. It's not like some big corporation. I don't know what the, some kind of internet radio station that's doing it. But I hope he gets to interview bands and stuff again. I hope he, uh, has guests and stuff and does things, especially with the, uh, you know what, uh, supposedly subsiding. <laughs> uh, I hope he does because I, I was a fan. Yeah, I was a fan growing up. I did my defense video. I said a lot of major points in that. And I think he's a, I think he's a cool guy. I don't think he's, I think he's, he knows he's a dork, quote unquote. You know, he always calls himself that. Um, but he had a charm about him, you know, he had a charm and people don't really understand that, but they had to be there. I'm sure a lot of older metalheads of, they are older than me, said, oh, he's a poser, fuck him, and just like dismissed him completely. But I was always a fan. I liked him more than um, Adam Curry, because Adam Curry was just too stiff and wooden and boring. Downtown Julie Brown <laughs> actually uh, hosted the ball a couple of times, and that was actually decent. It was surprising, but it's true, even though she was like Club MTV's VJ or whatever. <laughs> VJ. <laughs> pretty funny but yeah I'll, I'll probably watch it a couple you know once in a while a couple times and check it out and then if it's good i'll watch it once in a while i'm not uh adverse to uh ricky rackman returning to the uh metal scene at all like that you know i watching his youtube i was like i was putting in the comments yeah you know you should do the headbanger's ball again i agree with what you're saying you know he's talking about it and it's like he will and I think he's going to tell some stories, too, because that's what he said he was going to do. He's like, yeah, I'm not Eddie Trunk. I don't know all the producers and what who was on this record, but I have a lot of stories from back in the day that I can tell. And uh, it'd be pretty cool to see, you know, I'm talking about all this weird shit that happened because he hung around with a lot of people. Even before that Banner's Ball, he was kind of an L.A. mainstay and stuff. And it'll be cool to see. So happy to hear that, you know kind of my childhood coming back in a way, nostalgia aside, you know, I mean, it's definitely a nostalgia thing, like all this stuff that come, that's come out the last few years, you know, stuff from the 80s and 90s. It's a nostalgia thing, but in at the same time, he looks not even that much older than he was back in the day, and he still talks the same, and, you know, he'll probably do a good job at the, uh, <laughs> doing the, the headbanger's ball, or the ball, as he calls it. He doesn't want to use the word metal because he doesn't want to, ha doesn't associate it with hair metal, which is kind of weird. Um, 
but whatever. I don't know. He's like, I don't want to use it's, it's just the interview. Check it out. You can check it out. He does an interview. He wants to have heavy music or whatever. It sounds a lot like the 90s, unfortunately, when there's, you know, I can't use the word metal. But he, I think I understand what he means. He doesn't want to be associated with all the bands that he had to play on the ball, at Boehner's Ball. But, because <laughs> there was some bad shit. I mean, the situation with it now is like I'm discovering these bands. Some of these really shitty bands even, like, because the Shredder in the, in the band was, you know, like, really good. I'm just like, oh... I never checked those guys out. Maybe I could relate to that. I relate to, I, honestly, I relate to hair metal a lot more than I did back in the day. When you're a virgin until whatever age I'm not going to share, <laughs> then you're not really relating to all these lyrics about getting laid and falling in and out of love and all that shit. But when you get older and you have some experience, you like listen to it, you're like, oh shit, I don't remember that. Slide it in. Oh, I remember. <laughs> uh, uh, Spit it out? No. <laughs> Never mind. Anyways, I'm getting a little too uh, too much information, but it's just funny. Because it's like when you're a kid, you don't relate to all those songs and stuff. Or when you're a kid, way too late, too. But anyways, that's all.